this episode of Blue Zoo TV, presented by Hikari, Bob Snowden of the Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium takes us on a unique tour behind the watery curtain to show us how coral gets its start. Hey Bob, we're talking about how absolutely incredible PPG Aquarium is when it comes to the marine side of things. And here, it looks like you kind of like you have a mad scientist lab going on. What is this whole area? <laughs> this area is our coral propagation area. And this is where I propagate many different species of coral, both Atlantic, Caribbean, and Pacific corals. But this is where, where we do a lot of the propagation for not only to supply our own tanks with coral and to always have backup of everything that we have, but also to help supply other aquariums as well. Well, everybody talks about, at least a lot of people in the hobby talk about conservation. This is one of the ways that you guys are conserving the reef, isn't it? Absolutely. The more coral that's propagated, whether it's in a public aquarium setting or in somebody's house and their hobby aquarium, the less that will come off the reef, ultimately. Give us an idea of, of some of the corals that you guys are working on here. We have uh, different species of monopora, both plating and also uh, monopora hirsuta, which is more of a branching type of montipora. A couple different species of postlopora, uh, some soft corals, just a, a real uh, hodgepodge of different kinds. It looks like every piece of coral is attached to something. Why is that? Well, when I propagate coral, I usually attach them to either a, a piece of live rock or a tile or in some cases uh, on plant picks. And I'll show you one of those in just a minute, but it just helps me be able to take care of each one individually. It also makes it easy if I need to move them around. If I need to move them to another tank, I can just pick up that one piece instead of having it be a giant piece or a bunch of stuff all thrown together. Just as an example, this is, this is one of the acroprids that I have uh, propagated, and this is a proper microthalma. This is a plant pick that I have it on. So this way I can easily take this out of here. I can take that and I can affix that to the reef, or I can use the whole plant pick once it overgrows it and put it out. Now with something like that, at what point are you gonna take it? Is there a certain growth period or a certain size it gets to before you take it to a tank, or it just depends on the tank and depends on the infancy of it? Yeah, it depends on the need, really. I can move it out there when it's very small, or I can wait till it gets bigger. Um, a lot of times I'll keep them back here until they get bigger though. Everyone knows marine fish hate pellets, right? Not when they're fed Hikari Marine S or Marine A, the world's first sponge-like marine pellets. Chocked full of natural ingredients your marine fish need and love, these rapidly softening sinking pellets provide them a taste and texture your fish will instinctually adore. Ingredients like fatty acids, DHA, and EPA round out a nutritional package that's hard to beat. If you want your fish looking like they just came off the reef, feed them Hikari Marine S or Marine A. These are called brooders, which means they'll actually release larvae into the water. They can do it either by self-fertilizing or by fertilizing with a, with a neighboring colony. And you can't have that brood itself in your home aquarium if the, what, conditions are right? You can. If the conditions are right and the coral's getting the nutrition it needs, uh, it gets enough flow, enough light, so that it has enough energy to put toward reproduction. Um, and the way a hobbyist could do that would be they can either make some sort of mechanism to go over the coral in the tank, or they can have a separate tank that they can put them in at night, like a refugium or something like that, and actually harvest the larvae out the next morning. But I can show you some of the things that I use to do that here as well. Yeah, let's see it. All right, so this is what I call a planulator. It's really nothing more than some egg crate material that's cut into squares with a fine micron mesh attached to it and then I put the egg crate together. So what you have is a box with micron mesh coating the entirety of it. And the reason why I made this is because with the micron mesh, it's still gonna allow some flow to go through here. And what I'll do is I'll actually put corals in this overnight. Now the key to this is you have to make it so that it sticks out of the water a little bit because you don't want the larvae to go swimming away because they, they are capable of swimming. So what I'll do is I'll put this in the water like this I do this every night with this species in particular. This is Tabastria, uh, more commonly known as sun polyps. And what I'll do is I'll take a few colonies out, put them in here. 
what I'll do is I'll put them in there at the very end of the day and I'll leave them in there all night long. When I come in the next morning, if they release larvae, if they release planulae into the water, I can look around inside this box so they'll be enclosed. I can pipette them out and put them in a test tube. So what I'll do is I'll put them in little containers with tiles that I've pre-soaked or they've been culturing in the water. Once they get that, I can put the larvae in with those tiles and hopefully they'll settle on the tiles themselves. Cordon Zamqua Plus detoxifies your aquarium of fish killers like ammonia and nitrates. Amqua Plus detoxifies harmful chloramines, toxic pheromones, and chlorine, and has been a trusted solution for aquarists for more than 30 years. Cordon's superior water conditioning products help make fish keeping easy. Visit Cordon.com and check out the entire line of products and ask for Cordon products at your favorite store. Cordon, trusted solution since 1961. So some of the tiles I use are similar to this a small ceramic tile. This one is pre-cultured. It's got some coralline algae, bacterial biofilms growing on it. These will hopefully give the right cues to those corals to settle. But another type of tile I use looks like this. Now this is at about a couple of months old. It's a little hard to see. You can see the two little orange dots in there. Like I said, they do not have zooxanthellae, so they need to be fed. One of the things I feed them are live Artemia noplii, which are larval brine shrimp. I feed these guys every single day, sometimes twice a day. As I said before, one of the main ways that hobbyists like to propagate corals is through asexual fragmentation. We also do that here as well, and I'll just show you how we do it. This is a plant pick, usually used for selling like one rose. to put the stem in there. What I usually do is fill it with some gravel, fill it with water, tap the air out of it, take out one of my uh, cropper corals. But what I can do with this is actually take one of these branches and cut them off and transplant it to that. So I'm gonna take this one right here, snip that, put this back. Now what I can do is I can take this, I'm actually gonna make this a little bit wider here, the opening in that. Put that right in there just like that and that's asexual fragmentation. Admit it, you've tried freeze-dried foods before and they left you disappointed. Check out Hikari BioPure FD, the world's only pharmaceutical grade freeze-dried foods. Using the same raw materials as Hikari BioPure Frozen, our state-of-the-art process allows us to provide your pet the same color, smell, taste, and texture of the live animal with less moisture and more actual food. The patented oxygen barrier bottle significantly reduces oxidation. When live or frozen isn't practical, think Hikari BioPure FD. Bob, we've gone from uh, showing some great work with the small corals that you guys have been really developing into a beautiful clam. Explain a little bit about this because it's huge. Yeah, this clam is, is quite large. Uh, of course, they get much bigger than this. You just don't see them very often in the hobbyist uh, side of things that are quite this large. Um, but all of these clams, this is a Tridacna gigas, has the, have the ability to get extremely large. Um, th there's a couple of really big ones in public aquariums. Um, this, is, this is a good size one. This was actually donated from a local aquarium store that had it in one of their tanks for about nine or ten years. When you got it, was it this size or has it grown? Uh, it was pretty close to this big. Um, wow. It has grown a little bit, um, but uh, it's actually one thing I've noticed since I've gotten it is it's colored up a lot more. It's really, uh, the colors have really come out. So you had mentioned that many of the corals that you propagate here, you either ship out, farm out to other aquariums, or you put them in some of your display tanks. Yeah, that's correct. So I would imagine that we can go see some of the display tanks and you can pick out some of the corals that you've actually set up and designed. Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. Yep. To learn more about the show or to email us, go to bluezootv.com.